We're going to get, get going here. Um, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for Digital Coats of Paint. Um, Brett, I'm going to go ahead and present the PowerPoint. So let me know when it shows up. Okay. All right. No. <clears throat> awesome. I, 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 sorry, I said okay. I meant to say okay. I'll let you know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's up now. All right. Thanks. <laughs> All right, good morning, everyone. Digital Coats of Paint. Uh, the date is off, so please ignore that date. It is actually uh, 8-11. So um, this morning, we're going to be discussing just Michigan.com, the premium network, and then mobile. We're also going to discuss um, a new um, addition to the Campaign Insights dashboard, which is really exciting. I think you guys are going to be very happy about it. Um, so just a couple little odds and ends, but, but the bigger part is going to be really talking about the Michigan.com network and talking about mobile. Since mobile is going to become um, something we're going to be talking a lot about, and if you've all seen, tomorrow we've got an invitation at 9 a.m. to join a Skype call uh, with Drew from Detroit. Um, he's the digital manager there, and uh, we're going to be talking in at length about mobile. So this is just kind of a brief overview about some of where we want to go with mobile and why. So the agenda, Michigan.com Premium Network, uh, we're going to just briefly talk about what that might mean for you guys as sales reps. Why mobile ads? Why is it important for us to talk about them with our customers? Uh, the Campaign Insights dashboard update, and then Brett's going to go over the Campaign Insights user guide, which we actually got a copy of yesterday, and we will get out to you um, reps uh, very shortly after the meeting. And of course, usually our Q&A and follow-up will end the session. So let's jump right into it. So I wanted to present to you guys um, we have bi-weekly meetings with uh, Drew Van Tongren, as well as the other digital sales specialists and managers across the state um, every two weeks. And every uh, session we've been having lately with Drew, these uh, focus points have come up. And I want to share them with you because this is what is um, kind of being spoken about with the digital specialists across the state and also with, that, with Drew. So... For every one of our clients, we must deliver the right, this is kind of the mantra, I guess, is, is what I'm saying, is that it's going out across Michigan.com. For every one of our clients, we must deliver the right results, we must help them achieve their goals and objectives, grow their business, um, be the smarter partner, the premium partner, and you're gonna hear premium a lot, and then lead with premium digital. And then for every action we take, we must establish the greater value for the client, and we are relentless about retention, upsell, and cross-sell and that these actions are only possible after we have established value with the client, we must continually earn their business, and we must earn the right to ask for more investment. I just wanted to share these with you guys because, you, you again, this is something that starts off every meeting we've had recently, and I think they're really important things to remember and kind of keep in mind as we, as we go out there and speak with our customers uh, that, you know, we are the premium partner, and, and we really have to earn their business and the right to ask for more. So. Um, so the Michigan.com premium network, the reason we want to talk about this is really the premium network when we're speaking about that is that Michigan.com's premium network includes not only USA Today, but the Detroit Free Press, the Detroit News, Livingston Daily, um, hometownlife.com, the Lansing State Journal. We truly have strong, the strongest coverage across Michigan. And the reason I want to show you these MMS zones is because we really do reach the entire state with all of our Michigan.com premium networks. And it's really important for us to talk about that because for our customers, we're going to see a real shift and change towards focusing more on, yes, using geography still as targeting, but really also looking at behavior so that we can reach out to a variety of sources and as long as it's relevant to that customer, it's going to be a relevant experience in terms of impressions. So I really wanted to point this out, and I'm going to show you guys. We've got a map of um, the kind of traffic that all the Michigan.com properties get across these zones. I think you're going to be very, very surprised. So something I wanted to bring up in terms of mobile is we found out on Friday that 65% of our total Michigan.com 
website traffic, so across all the properties, comes from mobile, 65%. But given that, only, no, oh, hang on, only 10% of all impressions are sold for mobile. So 65% of our total traffic's coming from mobile. We're only selling across the state 10% of impressions going towards mobile. So of course, that's gonna be a prerogative. We've really gotta change that. If, if we've gotta go where our readers are going and, and get our message out through mobile. That's gonna be a very strong initiative. So going back, um, so with these MMS zones, keep in mind, so for Livingston, you guys wanna focus, zone seven is gonna be a big one for you. For o e of course, zone eight is our big zone to keep an eye on. And what I wanted to show you guys is like even zone one, the kind of traffic we're getting in zone one and zone two up north, you're gonna be very surprised at some of these numbers. So we were given an inventory forecast. Now this is for P4. Um, I don't have an updated one, but I think this is gonna give you a strong example of the kind of reach that we really have. So remember I was mentioning zone seven. So zone seven, look at this. You guys have in zone seven, that's Livingston and Washtenaw counties, 3.3 million desktop impressions available. Look at that mobile number though, 6.8 million. Now again, keep in mind, this is across all the Michigan.com premium networks. So this might be Livingston, or Livingston, this might be O&E, this might be Detroit Free Press and News. So that's why we have to think a little differently. That's, a, that's an impressive number, okay? For O&E, I mean, you know, of course, we're drawing in from the Detroit market, but look at that, 28 million desktop, 22 million impressions on mobile. It's just really strong numbers, and this shows you the need for having to expand um, our mobile reach. Now, remember I mentioned zone one. Look at zone one. Even up north, our reach is still really strong, 1.1 million mobile impressions. Even outside of this area, I mean, look at Chicago. Our, our Michigan.com premium network still has 1.8 million desktop and 2 million uh, impressions available via mobile. So these are really strong numbers to know. Canada, I mean, you know, look at this. I mean, all the way up to Sarnia, you know, it's not a lot in Sarnia, but it's still amazing that we're reaching there. Um, Toronto, 81,000 impressions. I mean, it just kind of goes to show that that our 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 journalists um, are writing good quality product that is being read. Our websites are being visited, and we do have something strong to offer. And this is something where we're going in to talk to our customers. We really have to tout and be proud of. I mean, this is something that is very important. You know, journalism is not dead. People want news. People are visiting our sites for that news, especially in this contentious election year. There's a lot of things going on. The world's a little crazy right now which, you know, it sounds bad, but it's good for journalism, good for news, and it's and it's really good for us. So this is just something that you really want to share with your customers. I hope this makes sense. Are there any questions about this, this grid? Okay. So moving on, and again, I, I want to mention, we're going to be covering, you know, mobile in more depth tomorrow. Uh, Drew, you know, and his team might be able to, to update this in, uh, inventory forecast and share with you some additional things that are coming. I know that our our last meeting with the uh, the digital team, we discussed some new ad units that are going to be coming to mobile um, in addition to um, some rich media ads. So, so I believe they talked about a gravity ad that will be available as a mobile unit. And I'm sure there's going to be others. There's probably going to be some sort of pop-out ad. But we are looking at, um, you know, some positive changes in our surrounding mobile. Hey, Scott. And, yeah. Uh, Dean had a quick question. Mm -hmm. um, and before I or tell you this question, um, I did, now, is it my understanding, I thought that the uh, call with Drew is going to be on Monday? And we're having the regular con the conference call for. Oh, the, is that okay? Yeah. You know, I believe you're right. My yeah. apologies. No, okay. It's not. yeah. There is a call tomorrow, and there is a call on Monday. Oh, so there's two. Okay. Tomorrow is the mobile initiative. Oh, okay. Okay. Sorry. Okay. I got that so he's yeah, he's kicking off that. Um, I'll 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 go over that at the end of you guys' call today. Okay. Okay. okay thank you. Um, and then Dean said, why do mobile impressions cost so much more than desktop? Um, 
Well, Sorry. I think, Dean, the reason for that is, and this is just a speculation, again, that's a question we can ask Drew. I mean, I think it's because there's less um, space for them. If you look at where they're, they're, you know, spread across the site, it's just a guess. I, I'm really not 100% sure why it's that much more. Um, it, it seems like it's a CPM that was developed a while ago that has just kind of stayed at a, at a higher level. Um, when it was launched, it was always it's always been a high CPM. Um, you know, with desktop, of course, these impressions can show up in such a huge variety of places, whereas mobile, it's a little bit more limited, um, you know, territory. Well, I, we, yeah, we can ask uh, uh, Drew tomorrow about that. It's always been my, it's again, these are kind of speculations, but it's always been my yeah. speculation that mobile um, has been on the rise, and so they value that a little bit more. And yep, so I true. think that might be, and then another thing, maybe logistically how we, you know, spread mobile out on our platforms. Remember, you know, we've had the app launches, we've had mobile site launches recently. So the technology to develop those things might have, you know, kind of been trying to offset the cost of the CPMs too. I mean, there's probably a lot of variables in it, but it's just yeah. that desktop's been around for a while. It's probably been established how to put those Ad units on there have been established, and mobile is probably a little bit more newer. There might be a little bit more value behind it, so there's probably yeah. a lot of factors behind it. But we can ask Drew that tomorrow. Yep. Yeah. And I, I mean, and I think this increase and in also in mobile impressions available kind of correlates with the increase in ad units that that are being built. I mean, we're we're seeing just this, this leaps and bounds in terms of what kind of mobile ads are out there, even in the last two years. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a much different world than it was even five years ago. Two years ago, we didn't have the availability of some of these these rich uh, ad mobile units, or, or we didn't have the ability to actually even put a 300 by 250. We were only doing those those small, smaller banner ads, which really didn't have a big effect. So, so it's a lot of changes that are happening with mobile. So let's move on though then to the um, the new changes with the Campaign Insights dashboard. So guys, display ads are now available as a tab on the Campaign Insights dashboard. This is very exciting. I know we talked about it when they launched Campaign Insights. Um, it has finally happened. I know that they are, you know, I personally just noticed it yesterday. And I know that it, it must have been added this week. Um, it is both local impressions as well as um, audience extension. So we'll show you guys that, but I, I encourage you to please, your campaigns that are running right now, go on to the Campaign Insights dashboard, check to see if they're active. If they aren't, give it a day or so, see if it's added, because I think they're gonna be adding these as we go along. And I'll show you a live example in just a moment, but I wanted to show you just, this is kind of when you click on the tab, this is the breakdown. I'll tell you the number of clicks, the number of impressions, and the click-through rate. Again, you can use the calendar to go back to the beginning of your campaign, or you can go back the past month, or you can go back the past week. I want to point out a couple things you notice under this graph, which gives you an idea as well of, you know, the impressions and the clicks. But underneath that, there's four new areas that I want to look at and focus on with you, um, and I'll show you this on the next slide. So. These four areas are, are things that you want to probably discuss with your customer and inter universal interaction. So universal interaction is basically the percent of impressions where a user entered the frame of the ad and remained for at least 0.5 seconds. So we're not talking just a scroll over. We're talking about remain there for you know about a half a second, which means there was some interaction, okay? Now, universal interaction time is the average length of time the user interacted with the ad. Now, in this particular case, you know, this one says 8.84 seconds, which, you know, in, in our mind, we're like, oh, it doesn't seem like a long time. It actually is. I mean, if you count off in your mind, eight seconds, thinking about that in like kind of, you know, digital terms, that that is a pretty good length of time in terms of interaction. It's an average too. So sometimes it's higher, sometimes it's lower. But that's basically the time someone is kind of reviewing that ad, deciding whether they want to click on it. So, so that time is actually very important. It's gonna give you a good indicator too about the engagement of that ad level, okay, or the ad itself. Hover time. So hover means the percent of impressions 
which resulted in a user hovering in an ad. Now, I don't know exactly how that's a lot, you know, of different between the, the uh, universal interaction time. Um, we can ask that question again um, as it comes up, but hover means the percent of impressions which, re which resulted in a user hovering in an ad, and then attention quality is the ratio of users that converted from hovering to actually interacting with the ad. So, so those are just four different areas that we want to focus on, or at least talk with our customers about. Scott? Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, I think uh, we're going to get more clarification from, um, you know, Laura and maybe Nick about this too, because some of this stuff, when they're talking about the display, and especially like high impact and all this, their terminology is a lot different than what we're used to just by yeah. from just impressions and clicks. So, but I think some of this is really, it, is it uh, overlaps kind of that terminology so you know when we're looking at hover versus interaction I think that in my mind and we're gonna get some more clarification is more or less you know they like using the word interaction but I really do think it's more of like that impression or whatever it's appearing I mean as far as where, where the cursor's at um, I don't know if if that's an actual hover I think the hover is probably gonna be if somebody is hovering over that ad ready to click on it and then the attention quality obviously we're just gonna get some more information about it so let's just be aware of this terminology but we're going to definitely look into this because now that everything's aggregating in the back of the insight campaigns insights um, you know our clients I'm sure are gonna be asking about this more so we definitely want to make sure that we know what we're talking about with this but Scott and I are gonna be um, probably getting on a phone call um, with Laura and Nick about this so just uh, hold tight with all this uh, terminology and uh, we'll get you some more information yep so again I encourage you guys to go to campaign insights look at the dashboard um, look at display um, I'm just going to show you a live example so this is perfect floors this is one of Steve Kemp's campaigns been running for a while and it's it's been performing very very well for him um, and it's a search for targeting campaign so he's had um, over the length of time 1400 clicks on his ads he's had 1.1 million impressions served and a point twelve point one two click-through rate very strong campaign and it's been very consistent as well you can see from this graph that it, it actually does serve very well for him um, I think we started it back yeah, 913 of last year. So we're coming up on a year of this running. Um, when you click on this tab that says View All Ads, it actually will break it down for you. Now again, this is probably gonna be a long list because I'm going all the way back to the beginning. Um, so it's gonna take a second to load, but this is gonna break it down for you about um, where the ads are running. Um, and it'll know. break it down to a daily interaction. Sorry, this is gonna take a second to load. I realize I went back a year or so. Um, I just want to say too, keep in mind that Scott's dashboard or the <clears throat> does he has the um, a lot of the all the Detroit um, accounts, and I was looking at a Livingston dashboard, and I'm not seeing a lot. I mean, there's some of them that are populating, but not all of them are populating back in our dashboard. So if you're trying to look for something that you do have a display campaign running with, either Media Maps or Local.com. Um, just give it a couple more days because I think it's still populating in there. I think Scott, you have pretty much all yours set up. Right? Yeah, I my guess is because we're under the Detroit dashboard, they probably launched the Detroit accounts. I, it's just a guess. I mean, but that's why I'm suggesting you guys log in, ch check to see if your accounts are there. If not, give it a day or two. You know, let's see if they'll they'll populate, and if not, we can reach out to Laura and uh, and Jeannie and Nick and find out you know if they have a time frame for that. Yeah, so don't be surprised because Louie just said, yeah, two of mine are not showing up yet. <clears throat> yeah. So don't be surprised if it's not back there yet. So just give it another couple days and we'll we'll keep looking into it. So actually, I didn't realize if I just as this example as well. So they are showing up for local.com. It's going to give you the creative size in the name and it's, it's based on the week. So this breaks it down by the week. And uh, so it is showing both local.com and media math information. So it's just a, it's it's great. This is really good information. It's something we've been waiting for. Which, I, this makes me very happy. This is just telling me that you know, they're they're hearing our, our need. 
this is just also making the Campaign Insights dashboard something that's really a useful tool for us beyond just our geo products. And, and it's really something that's going to make a difference in, in our interaction and what we can offer our customers. This is a tool they can use. Um, so there's that. Um, I know, Brett, I'm going to turn it back over to you in a second here. I know we, uh, we talked about doing the uh, campaign uh, insights. Oh, get ahead here. We're doing the user guide. So I'm going to go ahead and stop presenting uh, and turn it over to you for the user guide information. And does anyone have any questions before I close out or, or uh, turn over to Brett? everyone's good all right okay let me know when you see my screen here so okay thanks Okay, I can see your screen now. Okay, so uh, we just got this. I mean, this user's guide has been here, has actually been around for a while, but since now uh, we just had the launch of the display feature back in the dashboard, um, it's more relevant again. And well, it's always been relevant, but it's you know coming back again um, in uh, as far as a reference to point to to understand the uh, you know all of the Gannett Insights uh, reporting dashboard. So we're just gonna send out a copy of this once we're done here. And really, it's, uh, it's a good thing to look over if, you, uh, <clears throat> if you're going out to uh, a client and trying to uh, you know, talk about any statistics or metrics from any of your campaigns. This is, uh, and, you're, and you're not you know, comfortable or you're trying to maybe uh, get some more information about everything that's in the user's uh, guide. This guide is, uh, or the dashboard, this guide will really tell you everything because it breaks down the terminology, it breaks down how to use it, uh, breaks down each one of the product sections, and uh, it's really uh, it's really helpful. And we kind of always forget that it's here, but it is here. And so um, we will be sending that out after this call. But what I wanted to do was just give you a quick, uh, a quick, um, overview real quick of the display section since it's brand new and I think Scott might have uh, uh, covered some of that with the terminology but um, again we're gonna send this out so feel free to look over this but if anyone has any questions about any of this stuff um, please reach out to us and uh, let us know you know what your questions are um, but it breaks down each one of the sections here on the on the uh, dashboard. Obviously, right here we have the overview metrics. We're going to be having the just like with any other campaigns. We're going to have the clicks, impressions, click through rates. Um, we're going to have the visual metrics with the chart there. That's going to be showing um, the visual representation and a line graph of the uh, of the uh, display metrics that are there. So the clicks, impressions, the click through rate, breakthrough, um, the graph. Uh, displays the metrics over the above date range specified time on the page so I think that's pretty self-explanatory um, we have detail metrics which Scott was just going over right here uh, shows the advertisers name uh, the client name uh, name of an ad campaign uh, line item name name of a line item creative name name of a creative unit impressions number of impressions clicks number of clicks and click through rate so I mean, this is really breaking down everything a lot more, uh, way more than what we're getting from Point Roll with Gina Foya and any of those uh, um, reports that we were getting. So it's actually going to free them up too, I think, a little bit. And then, you know, they can start working on their other initiatives that they have, all the optimization team. This is really going to break everything down. It's going to give a lot more transparency with everything. Um, <clears throat> top performing ads. Uh, displays above the metrics for the best performing ad so just like in PPC or Facebook it's going to show the top performing uh, ads uh, that we have in a campaign so that's going to be good instead of just again getting a raw number of impressions and clicks we're going to actually get break this down and they're going to prioritize you know which ones have been performing better and then we know which creative is working 
So this is going to go on a lot with uh, understanding optimization a little bit more because then we can take a look at you know, what are those top performing ads, why are they performing better than the others, and it's going to be uh, you know segregating those to the most performing. So it's going to be a lot. It's going to be a lot more uh, information that we can decipher from how each one of these are going to be performing. Um, <clears throat> universal interactions. This is exactly basically what. Uh, uh, Scott just went over but again we're going to uh, we're gonna get a little bit more um, information about these uh, about exactly what universal interaction universal interaction time hover rate attention quality is so uh, and I know that many of you were contemplating putting video um, you know on a hero flip or push down or if we're talking about a gravity um, we've had this discussion before about the uh, the video metrics, and uh, I know that we had run, a, uh, um, Mary had run the uh, gravity ad at one point, and um, we really that first test run that we did, and we were deciphering all this. Uh, we were with Nick, and we were with Laura, and uh, a lot of that is if you are um, really wanting, if you have a video out there, and that it's going to be in high impact or whatnot. Make sure that you talk to Scott and I if you're going to go and relay this information to a client because a lot of that can get very confusing, especially with video, uh, video, um, the video metrics and the reporting behind it. We have a sheet, <coughs> we have a sheet and some information that's, uh, that that uh, Nick had sent out to us when we when we put that gravity ad out there. So uh, it's it's not something necessarily that you guys are going to understand just by looking at it. Really sit down with Scott and I, and we're going to try to get uh, one of the people from Detroit on call about how the video works and understanding the uh, the metrics behind them. So again, if you have another, if you have a video out there, any that are high impact with video, please reach out to Scott and I before you go out to the client and start talking to them about the reporting from that. Um, we will be getting more information. We would like to go over that a little bit more um, in time, as you know, as we're further along here with with all the display metrics. Um, so again, please reach out to us, and we could probably do a whole section on actually video reporting. Um, you know, uh, if uh, if we see that we need to. So, and then. Um, Let's see, the top 10, I think this was talking about top 10 video completion count displays the viewing percentages by video ad. Table displays how many viewers started the video and it indicates what percentage combined viewers watched. The last metric is completed. Yeah, so again, we'll just gonna, we'll revisit the video uh, metrics at some other point in time, but just know it's there and uh, we'll try to get you some more information. And then total site event count. So, Total site event count graphic displays a visual representation of the metrics above over the date range spe specified on the page. User can select which metrics they wish to see first choosing a campaign display uh, then selecting metrics. So um, again, this is another visual representation of everything that you have for a campaign that's gone out. Ad name view through count conversion occurred within 30 seconds of seeing but not clicking an ad. Interact through count number of times user interacted with ad and visited a landing page. That's pretty self-explanatory. Same through uh, click through count. Same as click through rate. Total event count actions taken after a user saw but did not click on an ad. Uh, click through uniques number of unique users uh, that clicked on an ad and visited the client's landing page. Total event uniques, number of unique users that were exposed to an ad and visited the client's landing page. Uh, view through conversion, conversions resulting from view through, um, and then total engagement rate from site events. So again, some of this is just new terminology and uh, we're gonna be breaking this down a little bit more. I think when we get more populated back here, especially with ours, because we don't have on the Livingston side, we don't have as much as you do, Scott. So I really like to go through these and, and and break them down a little bit more as time goes on. But we're going to send you this uh, send you this uh, user's guide. So it does. It goes through goes through all the products that we have. Talks about pay per click, 
uh, every, all the DMS products um, that we have here. So it's really good. I don't know if we've even sent this out before. So um, we're going to send this out. Just yeah, get I don't familiar. think we have. Just get familiar with it. And then if you have any questions, we can talk about it again um, privately or we'll talk about it on another Digital Coats of Paint. We can collect all the information. And what we'd like to do is if you have any questions, give them to us and then we will go to Nick and whoever else if we don't have the answers to and get more um, information on how all this Brett. works. Yeah. Uh, okay, so, you know, guys, this is a great example of, you know, the resources that we have um, in the back office. We have so much information back there. I was digging around yesterday, and a lot of times we go out and we create things and we're reinventing the wheel when a document like this already exists. So. I love that Scott reached out right to the right person. They got us the information, a direct link to um, this guide. I really want to encourage everybody just um, once Brett sends it out to study it themselves. You need to own this. You need to be able to explain it to your, to your clients yourself as the, the representative. And then if you have additional questions um, at a higher level, Brett and Scott can um, certainly go through those with you but I want every single rep including myself including the managers to know this inside and out that way you got a lot of eyeballs on campaigns and you're watching those as they go along and it's not Brett and Scott's responsibility so um, you know this is you know this is kind of a homework assignment that you guys are going to take this guide and study it and then come back to the table with any questions that we might need to answer as a team but um, we really need to own this because this is, you know, like Brett said, it's just like Google Analytics. I mean, it's our analytics on our dashboard and it's our data that we're delivering to our clients and it's very transparent because they can see this. So we need to be able to um, explain it at every level, um, inside out and backwards, so we can deliver the value. The other thing is um, it's a good time to just remind everybody that you should be viewing your campaigns and your dashboards since you guys are doing such a good job selling and you've got stuff up there now. Um, you've got data that you can look at. Every single month, you should be taking a look at your dashboard. Probably if you want to peek at it week one or week two, that's fine. But really, on a monthly basis, you know, you got to let some, some of these campaigns, depending on what product it is, um, move and get going along the way. So I just wanted to wrap with that on, on this guide. So please study it. And then um, we may even have a test on it because it's that important. Um, you know, great timing. I, Scott was so excited yesterday. And then Leah sends us a message. Hey, you know, the display is up. That's awesome. I love that you guys are in there looking, interacting with this site every day. Um, real quick, Scott, can you please put up your first slide, the digital sure. um, initiative slide? Yeah, let me just uh, reopen it. I already shut that. Hang on one second. So you're talking about the, uh, the team focus, the digital yeah. team focus? Okay. Yeah. All right, let me present my desktop, and I will have that in just a second. Let me know when you can see it. So just and while he's doing that, guys, talking about these meetings, um, they, Drew, um, just got back from a digital su summit. The larger sites attended this summit, and they came back, and I think I've mentioned, you know, we've got a goal as the state of Michigan of $1.4 million. So we're all going to have a piece of that pie. So this is going to be part of that initiative. Um, you're going to hear a lot of, you know, selling impressions, selling targeted impressions, and, you know, making sure we're getting um, the, these impressions on our mobiles. And if, you know, 65% of the eyeballs are there and we're only selling 10% of the space, you know, Houston, we got a problem. So make sure every single proposal has that on it starting, you know, yesterday. Um, make sure that's happening. But um, so that the call tomorrow. I believe it's from 9 to 10. You guys should all have the invite. Um, please jump on. Um, every interaction we have when they go out to a summit like this, you're going to take away something. So please be in a position to take notes and understand what the initiative is. Um, Monday, it looks like it's about an hour and a half call. 
Um, I promise these will be great. Um, I've been impressed with what Drew has been delivering every week, adding value, something we can use in the field for that week, that day. Um, and really, they're going to get Michigan moving and just give us that extra layer of information that we may not be getting. And it's great to see that they're filtering this down throughout the state. So that Monday meeting looks like it's a standing meeting. So um, just plan that in your calendars. Obviously, we've got digital coats of paint, and then they've planned it right after that for those weeks. And then on the off weeks, um, it's, it'll be there as well. So um, also with that, um, you know, I sent it to Grace and Kelly. I'm sure you guys are all aware. They sent you guys out an email um, to make sure that you guys have, because um, I will be reviewing your um, activities and opportunities and just your stat status and sales force every week. And I need your needs assessment and your presentations loaded into Salesforce for every single evaluate needs. I need your needs assessment and your present and closes. So I wanted to take this opportunity since we had everybody on to make sure those are uploaded for this week so I can see them. And the goal here is clearly to help you. The goal is to, you know, make sure that we've got, you know, we're bundling everything in um, and we're going to market making the best recommendations for these clients. And it kind of falls, falls into this whole slide. This is absolutely a very strong slide. And to Scott's point, I think Drew went out to corporate a you know, few months ago and he pulled these out and uh, he's been you know, delivering these same messages, um, you know, delivering the right results, help achieve their goals and objectives. I mean, that's what we want to do with our clients. And you know, remember, if you're living digital on the table, with your clients and you're only taking a print order or you're just taking a transaction, ac transactional order and not delivering a solution, a marketing solution for this client, you are not helping them achieve their goals. And I want that to really sink in. We are the best in the state. We can deliver to the right audience. You owe it to your clients, Scott, to make sure that you deliver those. Um, we want to grow their business. We want to be the smarter partner. You are the smarter partner. Walk with swagger out there. You are the premium partner. You are above every competitor out there, and you should walk with that swagger. So I'm just, I'm just pouring more on here. Um, top down sell. Lead with premium digital. Top down sell. They need it. We know the eyeballs are there. In every sense of the word, things are moving digitally. So make sure the right packages are delivered, not just take it in order. Um, or a small impression. That's not what we're trying to do here. Um, and then establish greater value for the client. We, you'll establish greater value for the client when you deliver the right solution because the retention will always be higher when you deliver, like Steve did with Perfect Floor, something that's going to work. If you deliver low impressions with a low budget, it's not going to work and you're not going to retain the clients. So this is just common sense stuff, guys. Um, relentless about retention, upsell, and cross-sell. Perfect. You know, we cross-sell into Livingston. We cross-sell into Detroit. Free press and news with the um, impressions and the paper, whatever it is. Again, we're delivering audience. And when you deliver the right proposal to the right audience, you have retention. It's just as easy as that. But these up next three are extremely important. These actions are only possible after we have established value with the client. Okay, can anybody open up your mic and tell me what that means? How do we establish value with the client? Come on, you guys are way too Wake up. I'm not gonna give it to ya. I'm gonna call in somebody. <coughs> Libby. Hey, Libby. Um, I think just one way you can establish value is through we have all these um, client testimonials and different testimonials from other clients and showing them and proving to them with actual physical results that this did help the client, this did bring traffic to their site. 
and uh, bring people in front of their business and what they were looking to do. So I guess just through even other client testimonials and case studies and things like that, we have the solid proof that it's going to bring value to the business. Excellent answer. High five. I'll give you a candy bar. <laughs> um, great answer. Most senior reps, um, people that are just starting the business, the way they build their um, confidence and conviction in themselves and as they're delivering to clients, they use third party stories. I would print out and know all of our um, um, case studies, if you want to call them, our success stories that we have in the playbook and know them like the back of your hand. And bring those out. Know your dashboards. Know your team's dashboards. Know what's happening in your marketplace so you can just drop some success stories. So excellent, excellent. Um, anybody else? So another way that we establish value is on that very first call, or even if you have been in there for a long time and you're saying, you know, I've been your print rep for 20 years, but now I really need to make sure you understand the power of the audience that we deliver to, and we want to make sure that you know what our capabilities digitally. I need to sit down and have a solid discussion with you and you're sitting down and you're digging deep on a needs assessment and you're asking questions about their business that you've already done research, you've prepped and planned, you've given them the respect that if they've set an appointment with you, that you've done a proper prep and plan to deliver the, um, you know, have a great conversation with them to uncover the, their exact needs based on you, what you found and based on what their initiatives are. When you combine a prep and plan with a solid needs assessment and a great, simple conversation, you establish value, okay? And that's how it kind of leads right in. We must earn their business continually. That's how we also earn it. We earn it by having a good, honest, open relationship where we get them talking and we tell them that we have done the research and pulled the information. We've earned it, we've established value, and we continue to earn it as we sell them product. And you may not get everything at once, but you get sometimes you have to get one at a time. And then I this statement below is something I've always said, you must earn the right to proceed. That's what I used to say. You must earn the right for more investment. If you earn the right to proceed, you have done a proper prep and plan, and you have done a solid needs assessment. And I think, you know, if you guys can just make sure that every call has those three components, easy, open conversation, solid prep and plan, and excellent needs assessment, you will find your closing ratio becomes higher. If you're out there, and I've done it at times, guys. I've done it. I walked in your shoes as a rep for 10 years. Trust me, seeing lots of people winging it. If you wing it, your closing ratio will always be lower than those that prep and plan and take a little more time. So I just, I really wanted to tell the how and the why behind a couple of these um, points because they're spot on and they're just some of the expectations that we have. And um, you know, now it just kind of, this falls right into me asking for your needs assessment, me asking for your presentations, because it's gonna show us what prep and plan was done. It's gonna show us what needs assessments are being done. And it's, you know, it's gonna allow us to give you a high five, or it's gonna allow us to say, hey, you know what? What about this? Or what about that? and it's gonna give you a real opportunity to advance that sale. So hopefully you feel that this is not a nuisance, it's a partnership, and we're gonna you know, help you proceed there. So um, that's it. Sorry I was a little long-winded, but I get a little passionate about this stuff. Nice job, um, uh, guys, on this, and make sure you're studying this guide so we can um, you know, make sure, maybe we'll even have each of you present out, um, I think Scott and Brett have done this before, present out the dashboard so you guys know it really well. So, all right, that's a wrap. That's all I have. All right, any other questions, guys? Um, if not, we'll just go ahead.